Hello. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about your first draft of your final project that's due this Saturday and specifically talk to you about the structure that I want your story to be in and give you uh, an example of that. So, uh, so this Saturday, May 2nd, um, by midnight, you're handing me a first draft of your final project. Um, I want to see as much as I can, uh, as much progress, and as many of the following elements as you can get in there. If there's a couple things you can't, uh, just keep in mind you're going to have a couple days uh, to revise it. So you'll hand it in. I'll turn around some comments, and then you'll have till Tuesday, May 5th at midnight, which is the end of the final exam period for this class uh, to revise it. So um, you're going to, uh, for your article, you can put it in a Google Doc uh, and share it with me or you can post it to a blog or website and share the link with me. So either one is fine. Um, so again, I'm looking for around 750 words, AP style, uh, and these elements here. Uh, but what I want to talk uh, about a little bit about is your structure. So uh, the structure that your story should follow. All right. Uh, so here's what I'm looking for. All right, let me walk you through this a little bit. Uh, so first of all, your headline. Uh, it should be clear, descriptive, use keywords. You know, if someone Googled your story, uh, put in a couple keywords, would your, would your headline pop up? Um, your headline might be a question that you set out to answer. Um, but it should be really clear. It should say what your story is about. All right. The second thing is lead, uh, the beginning of your story. Lead with real people. Uh, lead with mo what's most interesting. Um, what would you tell your roommate uh, if you had a limited amount of time to tell them what you're working on? Uh, you have to make your reader care in that first paragraph. Okay. Uh, and then it should also point towards your story. So that's the beginning. And the, your lead is really critical. Uh, right under your lead, uh, you have your nut graph, uh, which is just a sentence or two that clearly states what your story is about. All right, so you need to say uh, very plainly, here's what my story is about, here's what I'm going to do with the rest of the article, right in your lead. Uh, the next thing I'll have, have is called a cosmic graph, and this comes right after your nut graph, and it's just a sentence or two that puts the story in a larger context. Why should we care about your story? What's the significance beyond this immediate story? All right. Um, often somewhere in your lead or right under your uh, cosmic graph, you can have one of your best quotes. Again, you're trying to get quotes from two people uh, and this should reinforce your, your lead and your nut graph and kind of summarize what's to come in your story. Uh, you need a methodology which is just a sentence or two that tells your readers where you got your data, uh, what, where you got your data, what you did with it, um, and it can also define like some key terms, what it means. I'll show you what that looks like. From there, the structure of your article is really your findings. Okay, uh, so I've asked you, each of you to come up with like uh, two to four findings or takeaways. <clears throat> These are the things that you, you know, you set out, you asked a question, you have an, a story angle, and here's the things that you learned in the process. So you're just listing them, you know, here's my, here's my finding one, and then you're kind of explaining a little bit. Uh, if you have a quote, if you have anecdotes, if you have visualization, use that to support your finding. Then you go into finding number two, do the same thing. Then you go to finding number three, uh, and you just kind of go through however many you have, uh, you walk us through those. All right, and then um, at the end is your kicker, uh, the way you end your story. It might be a, uh, something that points back to the beginning. It might be a good quote, but you need some kind of ending. All right, um, in the structure of your article, use subheads to break up the large sections of text, and often the best place to do this is in your findings. Uh, create a subhead for each of your findings, and that helps the reader kind of look at it. Um, add hyperlinks. All right, Anywhere you get information to your original data source, uh, other websites, reports, organizations, uh, put links in. Any, any place that you got information that's important, link to it so that your reader can keep going. Um, put photos or graphs or charts or visuals in the, in the appropriate place um, in your article. And again, this helps break up your text. 
Uh, at the end of your story, I want to see a, a link to your spreadsheet. Um, and this is a way to kind of give some transparency uh, and just say to your reader, here's my data set so that they can look at it and see you know, what you did for themselves. Also remember, um, you're writing, if you're writing with numbers, uh, here's some good tips to follow. Uh, here's, a, here's a story from the past uh, someone did about bike thefts um, at Rowan's campus, which you can use uh, as an example of a, of a student project. All right, so I wanna go back through this uh, structure and give you an example. All right, uh, so I provided a link to this data story here. Uh, I could have picked anything, but this one uh, seemed timely and, and it has a, a nice structure. So the first thing you'll notice is um, obviously the headline how the virus transformed the way Americans spend their money. Okay, so it's really clear what this story is about. Uh, it's got a couple keywords, virus, money, Americans, spend, all right? And you can see it really sets out to answer a question. This is how the virus has changed how people do that, all right? Uh, it also has a nice visual right at the top. Uh, so if it's good to have a visual at the top or you can put a photo at your top, it's nice to have something visual to kind of draw your, your reader in, okay? Um, after that is your lead, all right? Lead with something uh, with what is most interesting. So here's the lead. The coronavirus has profoundly altered daily life in America, ushering in sweeping upheavals in the U.S. economy. Uh, among the most immediate effects of, what are the most, among the most immediate effects of the crisis, radical changes in how people spend their money. In a matter of weeks, pillars of American industry suddenly ground to a halt. Airplanes, restaurants, arenas were suddenly empty. In many states, businesses deemed non-essential, including luxury goods and golf courses, were order closed. All right, so this is your lead here. Um, it's changed how people spend money, and this uh, kind of illustrates it in some concrete ways. All right, uh, the nut graph a sentence that clearly states what your story is about. All right, I'll go down here a little bit. There's this a little lower, but here it is. Um, here is their nut graph of their story. This is what this story is about. Some companies like Walmart, Amazon, and Uber Eats have seen spikes in purchases, but customers of many bu other businesses have simply stopped spending, the data shows, okay? Everything in this article fits under this nut graph. All right, so you need, again, it's only two sentences long, and it says clearly this is what it's about. Some companies have seen a spike, others and others have simply stopped. All right, a cosmic graph, a sentence or two that puts this in larger context and tells us why we should care. This is right here. Why should we care about this story? How people spend determines which companies survive and who has a job. That's why this matters, why spending matters. Is this the entire economy is based on um, what's going on and how people are spending money? With no end to the outside, outbreak in sight, consumer spending is likely to be fundamentally different in many, many months to come. Okay, so again, the cosmic um, graph, and here comes my emails, all right? Um, your best quote is going to go up high, all right? You can see they have uh, their first quote is right here. This is the sharpest decline in consumer spending we have ever seen, all right? So a nice quote that's up high that points to the rest of the story, all right? Um, a methodology, a sentence or two that shows how readers got their numbers, all right? Uh, this is uh, their methodology right here. All the charts in this article are based on the New York Times analysis of a data set from Earn, Earnest Research, which tracks and analyzes credit card and de debit card purchases for nearly 6 million people in the United States. While the data does not include cash transactions and therefore does not reflect all sales, it provides a strong snapshot of the impact of the virus on the economy. All right, so they're explaining how they got their data and what they did with it, right, and kind of putting it in context. So you need something like that as well. All right, from here, they're giving you their key findings. All right, um, their first finding, grocery sales are up as people cook at home. All right, and they have a nice little visualization that goes with it. They explain that. 
uh, just in a little bit of more detail. Finding number two, spending on travel has slumped as people hunker down. These are all things that people are spending less on, airlines, lodging, cruises, all right? They explain this a little bit. Finding number three, restaurant sales have plummeted. All right, so restaurants are all down, delivery services are up. Next finding, spending on media and entertainment is mixed with many losers and a few winners. All right, so these are all things people are spending less money on. People are spending more money on ebooks, news, gaming, that kind of thing. All right. And they just, this is the structure of the article to go, right? Just go to the next finding. They have a little visualization. They have a little more explanation of it. Uh, sometimes they have quotes in here. Uh, this is where you can add your quotes. Okay. Uh, so this is kind of the basic structure. All right. Um, the ending. Let's look at the ending here of this story. Right. So they're talking about all the things that are up and down. And then they kind of have a surprising finding at the end which is um, spending is even down broadly across healthcare industry, right? As those who, have, who conduct elective procedures, dentists and specialists not working uh, are doing less business. Surprisingly, we have actually seen a decline in healthcare spending, even in this environment, all right? So this is the end. Some things are up, some things are down, and even surprisingly, people are spending less on healthcare. All right, so that's the ending, that's the kicker. All right, so again, you noticed uh, this story uses subheads, all right, for each of their findings, which is kind of nice, break it up. Lots of links here, all right, they link to other news articles, they link to um, more information, data sets, so put links in. Um, photos, graphs, and charts in the appropriate places. Again, so you're doing at least two visualizations, put them in the correct place in your article, uh, and then a link to your, um, your data set okay so that's a good example um, so you're doing a first draft by Saturday um, give me as much as you can and let me know if you have questions this week I'll be checking in with each of you take care